The topic of this presentation is the effect of standardized ileal digestible valine to lysine ratio on nursery pig growth performance, originally presented at the Midwest Animal Science Meetings in March of 2016. To begin, we know that the inclusion of synthetic amino acids in swine diets allows producers many advantages. First, while meeting the animal's very specific requirements, we can reduce environmental impact by decreasing the amount of excreted nitrogen. Second, by replacing special, specialty protein sources such as fish meals or processed soys, we can decrease the diet cost. The NRC in 2012 estimated that the standardized ileal digestible or SID valine to lysine requirement for a 7 to 11 kilogram nursery pig is 63.7%. Research at K-State also confirmed this value. However, oftentimes these studies were conducted where pigs were fed at or above their lysine requirement. That being said, current literature lacks two items. The first, research where pigs were fed below their lysine requirement. We know that when investigating another essential amino acid in ratio to lysine, if we are over-formulated in lysine or perhaps don't know the lysine requirement, we are at risk for potentially underestimating the other amino acid of which we are interested in. Second, literature lacks the application of best-fitting nonlinear statistical models. This is a process in which we can apply several mixed models to the data and have an objective means to identify which model fits the data the best. This will give us the best requirement for that animal. With these newer technologies and questions in mind, it leads us to the objective of the study that I will discuss in this presentation, which was to determine the SID valine to lysine requirement for a 7 to 11 kilogram nursery pig using best fitting mixed models. A total of 280 nursery pigs were used in this experiment. They were weaned at 21 days of age and placed in the nursery according to body weight and gender. After five days on a common starter pellet, pens of pigs were allotted to the dietary treatments in a completely randomized block design according to their body weight. Initial body weight was six and a half kilograms at the start of the experiment and each treatment had eight replications with five pigs in a pen. A previous experiment in the same facility found that the SID lysine requirement for a 7 to 11 kilogram nursery pig was 1.4%. Knowing this, we can formulate diets in this experiment to 1.24% SID lysine to ensure that pigs were below their lysine requirement. There were seven dietary treatments increasing in the SID valine to lysine formulated value. We began at a lowest diet of 50% and ranged up to the highest diet or 85% SID valine to lysine. I would like to note that in the manufacturing process at the feed mill, we first made the lowest and the highest or the 50 and the 85% diets. Then, while still at the feed mill, we created the five intermediate treatments using blending at specific ratios. This allowed us to eliminate potential discrepancies that might occur during the feed manufacturing process. Pigs were fed treatment diets for 14 days, followed by a common diet for another 14 days. Both of these were fed in meal form. Pigs were weighed on day zero and every seven days till the conclusion of the experiment at day 28 to determine our growth response criteria. Each pen had a self-feeder and water so that pigs had free access to feed and water through the duration of the trial. Data was analyzed using the PROC Glimix program in SAS and pen served as the experimental unit with body weight serving as a covariant. Results were identified as significant with a p-value of less than 0.05 and tendencies 
identified between a p-value of greater than 0.05 and less than 0.1. We evaluated three dose response models that I will cover in more detail later in the talk. However, they were the quadratic or the QP, the broken line linear or the BLL, and the broken line quadratic or the BLQ models. This chart displays the diet composition. We will look at the lowest or the 50% valine to lysine diet and the highest or the 85% valine to lysine diet. Again, these were blended diets. They are typical corn and soybean meal based diets, all containing 10% dried whey. You will note that the only difference between the lowest and the highest level diets is the inclusion of synthetic valine. This was accounted for by corn in the lowest diets. Next, we'll look at the calculated analysis for these diets, again, the lowest and the highest. And remember, we formulated lysine below the requirement at 1.24%, and all other amino acids were formulated at above the NRC requirements to ensure that they were not limiting or confounding factors. Again, the only difference here would be valine at the lowest 50% up to the highest or 85% level. Looking at the chemical analysis of diets on an as-fed basis, across the top of this table is the dietary treatments ranging from 50 to 85%, and the values within the table are the total amino acid content as analyzed by the lab. I would like to highlight two points. The first, that as we would anticipate, lysine remained rather constant through all of the treatments, as we would expect as they were formulated to the same levels. Additionally, as we would expect, valine, uh, we observed stepwise increases in valine from the lowest to the highest level. Moving on to results, we will look at growth performance as demonstrated by average daily gain, feed intake, and gain to feed or feed efficiency. Then we will look at the three nonlinear mixed models. To begin, I will set up my result slides as they will be the same for the next two growth responses. Across the bottom, or on the x-axis, are the seven dietary treatments of our valine to lysine formulated levels, and on the y-axis is the response criteria, in this case, average daily gain in grams. This graph then shows the average daily gain for the experimental period, or days zero to 14. In this response, there was a quadratic effect with which increasing SID valine to lysine created a quadratic increase in average daily gain. This is primarily driven by the response we see from the 50 to the 63% levels with no further improvement thereafter. Moving on to feed intake, there was also a quadratic response. Looking at average daily feed intake in grams, we see that with increasing SID valine to lysine, there is a quadratic increase in average daily feed intake. We know that when we are deficient in branched chain amino acids such as valine, there can be a harsh impact on feed intake, as we see in the lower levels here, indicating that the valine requirement may be somewhere in the 60s as we see no improvement thereafter. And finally, although most of the response was intake driven, there was a quadratic re response in feed efficiency, with which increase in valine brought an increase in feed efficiency up through the 68% with no improvement in the higher levels. Next, looking at subsequent performance, again, pigs were fed the experimental diets for 14 days, followed by a common diet for another 14 days. For days 14 to 28, or the common period, there were no significant differences for average daily gain. For average daily feed intake, there was a linear effect with which pigs who were previously fed lower levels of valine continued to have lower feed intakes. 
Next, in feed efficiency, there was also a linear response with which pigs who were previously fed the lower levels of valine had improved feed efficiency as compared to pigs fed the higher levels of valine. Moving into the overall performance, we see that many of our observed differences were probably driven by the effects that we saw during the experimental period. As with average daily gain, there is a quadratic tendency for improved average daily gain with increasing valine treatments in a linear response in average daily feed intake with improved intake as we increase valine to lysine, and then no significant differences for feed efficiency. Next, we will look at the nonlinear mixed modeling results. Again, we evaluated three models, the quadratic polynomial, the broken line linear, and the broken line quadratic. During the statistical analysis process, a value was generated by SAS called the Bayesian Information Criterion, or the BIC value. When generating the models, a decrease in the BIC value of two units or greater between the models indicated that that model fit the data better or had an improved fit. This model was then selected to draw our conclusions on. Here we are looking at the modeling results for average daily gain from the experimental period or days 0 to 14. Across the bottom of this graph are the dietary treatments ranging from 50 to 85 percent SID valine and on the Y uh, axis is average daily gain in grams. You will see that the data plotted within this graph are the pen means. And although they do show variation, it is important to note that this is the most appropriate way to perform this statistical modeling as compared to just using treatment means. That being said, for average daily gain, the best fitting model was a broken line linear model. It found a break point at 62.9% SID valine to lysine indicating that the data showed no further improvement in average daily gain beyond 62.9%. Moving on to the modeling results for feed efficiency, again for the experimental period, in this case the best fitting model was a quadratic polynomial model. It found maximum performance at 71.7 SID valine to lysine, however, 99% of that maximum performance was able to be captured using 64.4%. The takeaway with these uh, methods of statistical modeling is that not only can we find a requirement, but we can create a response surface in which producers or nutritionists can compare their levels of ingredients or expected results based on the modeling outcomes. That being said, in summary, the SID valine to lysine requirement for a six and a half to a 10 kilogram nursery pig ranged from 62.9 to 71.7, depending on the response model. For average daily gain, there was no further improvement in performance found after the 62.9% SID valine to lysine level. This was predicted using a broken line linear model. For feed efficiency, a quadratic polynomial produced the best fit. It found maximum performance at 71.7%. However, 99% of that maximum performance was still able to be captured at 64.4%. And this concludes the presentation, and I thank you for listening.